Well, hello there. Um, I'm excited about talking about the number 28. It is very, very significant, as all Bible numbers are. want to make sure that I don't go any further without uh, reading what I call our study disclaimer uh, and endorsements uh, or our right to reserve anything that we know that is not of God. And so while many Bible scholars, you know, they have free will to see and comprehend the Bible or the text through their own eyes, and, and while through their ways of understanding, like the Bible tells us in part, therefore, therefore man will never be able to have the full divine revelation of purposes of God regarding these numbers that we discuss in our uh, classes that we host uh, during our prayer time. Uh, are colors that we may go over. And so that's why Proverbs 14, 12 reminds us that there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Romans eleven thirty four tells us, For whom hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? And then 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, For who has known the mind of the Lord, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so since that... Uh, is what is really, really right, uh, we reserve that right. And so that means that you can consider this based on uh, studies that we have done and those study uh, references that you will receive during any study that we have um, or who's delivering the message. Just be prayerful and do your own research so that we, not you, but we won't be deceived, and then you will be able to also share with me if there's something that you feel that is not biblically uh, correct. And so don't have a problem with that. I definitely don't want to mislead. We have too much going on in this time that we're in when people are being misled or, or speaking in error. And so God bless you for taking time to listen to this. We're talking about uh, the biblical significance of the number 28. I thought it was very, very powerful uh, for what I was able to review through my study, uh, through the uh, God's Kingdom Ministries um, website, uh, did some research, and I think because they they did um, there through the Hebrew letters, uh, they talked about how this number 28 ties in to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I thought that was very, very significant. And so if you are one of our students and uh, you're listening to this teaching, don't forget to stay connected to the different teachings that I am doing uh, on, uh, you know, Holy Spirit power and as a, a Holy Spirit being number one to lead us and guide us in our lives. And so the number 28, I want to jump right into that and just kind of share a little bit about uh, what the Bible tells us as far as giving a scriptural basis about the number 21. I'm sorry, not 21. I keep saying 21. 28. And so the number 28 is the number of the leader and the Holy Spirit, as I said. Uh, so this particular person who referenced Dr. Bullinger, uh, he said that the number in scripture says very little about the number, which is true. But the part that I wanted to bring out is talking about how, as we look at the Gospels, he's talking about uh, the eternal life. Many of us, um, you know how we say, uh, even coming up 2017, that, you know, the number have a significant, as far as the number 17, or 1 plus 7, you know. And we put that together as, you know, uh, Jesus being 1, or the Holy Spirit being 1, and 7 being the number of completion. But in this study, there uh, they found that there was um, an indication of 20 different indications uh, relating to the ministry of salvation. Uh, and so what I wanted to share about what was most important about the significance is that what comes from the Bible, what comes from Matthew, what comes from uh, a person when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, then they are going to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so the gospel is pictured, as most people, as having to do with 
someone's personal Passover experience. And so that means once we accept Christ, we're justified by faith. And so leading by the Holy Spirit, uh, this number 28 is very important because as we picture this, we can see um, what the study was giving me is that um, clearly there was no, you know, def- how do they say, defined or um, areas in the Bible that we can go in and point out that this number talks about about eternal life or eternal salvation uh, as far as leading by the Holy Spirit. But what I thought was very, very moving in the scripture uh, that they gave from this study was that they talked about the first chapter of Matthew uh, as it broke it down of the genealogy of Jesus Christ and how it was divided into three sections of 14. Looking at Matthew chapter 1, uh, in verse 17, I'll store it out to get you to kind of see where I'm going with this. It says, verse 17, it says, Therefore all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David to the deportation, uh, deportation, I'm sorry, deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportations to Babylon to the time of Jesus Christ, 14 generations. So if you look at that, it's divided into these three sections of the genealogy of 14, which makes 28. And so the number 28 then should be viewed as having a connection with the number 14. So we covered that number already. You may want to go back and listen to that tape, which is the number of release. Uh, uh, we call this the number of making sure that we understand uh, our, how to say, our preparation and now we're released to do what God is calling us to do in this divine position uh, that's our graced position that he has us in. And so these three numbers, in a sense, represent the Passover, the Pentecost, and the Tabernacles. And so Israel was released from Egypt at Passover, as I talked about earlier on, because of the events occurring on the night of Abib. And so the number 28 indicates the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is what is referenced in the study, uh, which points to Pentecost. And so finally, the number 42 has to do with the full anointing of Christ, which points to the tabernacles. Okay. And so the number 28 is the climax of the second period, as I talked about early on, of 14 generations. And so after 28 generations from Abraham, the people of Judah were taken into captivity into Babylon. And because of a great general lack of understanding of the nature of Pentecost, most people find this to be pleasant because people would think that Pentecost would be a time of freedom rather than bondage. And so we need to look at and understand that Pentecost is a leaven feast and that King Saul was a Pentecostal type of uh, leader. And so the connection becomes more clear as we go back and study this particular aspect as it relates to their genealogy and their history or their, uh, how they say, what, how they actually take care or, or, or handle their festives or their, uh, their uh, Bible writs or rituals. And so Israel left Egypt at Passover and spent its Pentecostal days in the wilderness under Moses. And so they were supposed to enter the promised land at the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And as you begin to look further into this particular study, uh, you'll find that after 28 generations, Judah was led to another wilderness type. I said wilderness type, uh, which they which they experienced outside of the land where they had to rely upon the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so this is the reason why this particular number 28 is significant as it relates to the leading of the Holy Spirit and making sure we understand that this is a great time for us to recognize how because the Holy Spirit leads us, then now it also shows us that uh, there is a specific time that for everything. And so when the Holy Spirit leads us into doing something or to prepare us for a thing, then we can refer to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 2 through 8. And we all know that particular chapter is talking about there's a time for everything. And so, but in this particular chapter, I like how they broke it down for us to look at the significance of this number. Because here, uh, they're giving us, in this particular chapter of Ecclesiastes, if you go there, you can see that it's given us 28 times 
of the times divided into 14. And so that means two different uh, uh, points that is brought by a time for an issue or a time for a thing uh, is divided into these 14s times two. And so I want to read them to you. Uh, and the first one is a time to be born. And then here is the second one, a time to die. And so a time to plant, a time to pluck. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. And as you can see, 14 times 2 of these wonderful different ways that we can look at time, which gives us also a way of looking at seasons of matters in our lives or issues that we need to understand as it relates to time. And so this is another example of how 28 is divided biblically. And so therefore, it is still connected to the number 14. And so as we begin to study this, we can find the men of the Bible who were required to leave or depart. Now, you remember what I'm saying is about timing and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so these different, different biblical kings and leaders were required to leave or depart, you know, from a place or go somewhere else or do something. And usually if you go back and study it, it's showing that it was always the 28th time. And if you look at uh, uh, the or whatever it was, the 28th time that their name is mentioned, it is clear that they were to do these things by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to go ahead and give you maybe, I think it's about maybe 10 different uh, ways that uh, we can see in the Holy Spirit these 28 different times by these types of leaders or by a chapter what was going on and how the leading of the Holy Spirit was uh, mentioned 28 times in, in these different chapters and the different leadings of the Holy Spirit through these different leadership and leadership types. And so uh, we'll start with Genesis chapter 8 and 15. It said uh, the 28th time that Noah's name is mentioned there where God told him to go out of the ark in verse 16. And in leaving, he was following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then the 28th time that Abraham's name is mentioned is in Genesis 14 and 12 where the kings of Elam and Babylon took Lot, Abraham's nephew, Abraham's nephew captive in the war with Sodom. This is much like Judah being taken captive to Babylon after 28 generations years later. And so one can easily draw a parallel between Lot and the other people of Judah, showing how each was full of leaven and needed to be purged by some tribulation. And so this is why we need to look at how the Bible is telling us that some things need to be purged and some things need to be having the time to wait or do a thing. And so so that the fullness of his time or the fullness of a purpose of a matter can come to, um, you know, be giving him glory of being, uh, how they say, set apart. And so then the third one is the 28th time that Jacob's name is mentioned is in Genesis 28 and 6, when Esau recognized that Isaac had sent Jacob to Padan, I can never say that one, Padan of Padan Aram to find a wife. And so Jacob was being led by the Holy Spirit here as well. Jacob was yet, uh, how to say, a supplanter or usurper. And so God was sending him to a foreign land for further purging. Uh, through tribulation. And so in bondage to Le uh, Laban, remember, uh, he had to learn to be led by the Spirit, and in his return home, he became an overcomer, and the angel changed his name to Israel. And so again, a matter of time, a matter of timing, when we say time, the timing of purpose-driven areas in our lives that God want to do a thing and or to show himself strong through a matter where the enemy think that he have us, you know, in bondage 
forever. But you can see Jacob's name turning to Israel was quite powerful in this particular uh, chapter. And then uh, the 28th time, which is number four, uh, Israel's name is mentioned is in Genesis 48 and 13, where Joseph took his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, to be blessed by Jacob. So you can see in this, he was led by the Holy Spirit as well. And so this this kind of gives you an overview of these different uh types that I'm showing you as far as being led by the Holy Spirit and the times uh, of the number of times in these chapters by these particular leaders. And so then number five, uh, the 28th time Joseph's name is mentioned is in Genesis 39 and 11, where Joseph house of Potiphar to conduct his duties, and Potiphar's house is his house of bondage. And there Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce him. And so it's not hard to see how Joseph was led by the spirit while in bondage. It is, again, similar to the stories of both Lot and Judah. But remember, Timing is still everything, and if you are moving by the time and the purposes of God, then you're leaving led by the Holy Spirit. And so the number six, the 28th time that Joshua's name is mentioned is in Joshua 1 and 10, where he commanded the people to great, I'm sorry, to great and, uh, sorry, not the people to get ready, that is, about the Jordan. And and that, of course, is the purpose of the Pentecost, the leader of the Holy Spirit, uh, what is prepares us, uh, the Holy Spirit prepares us to cross over to fulfill the Feast of Tabernacles. And so this is why that was very important during that time for Joshua. And so then, number seven, the 28th time that David's name is mentioned is in 1 Samuel 17 and 39. And so in this passage, passage my tongue is all tied this, today. Uh, and so in this passage, uh, Saul has given him his armor in order to fight Goliath. But David says, I cannot go with these. Uh, David took off Saul's armor and went against the lion with the full armor of God, the spiritual armor which was given by the Holy Spirit. That means if I go before you and you be for me, ain't nothing going to be able to conquer you. And so then, and number eight, the 28th time that Peter's name is mentioned, is in Acts 10 and 5, where Cornelius was told by the leading of the Holy Spirit to send men to Joppa and to inquire in the tanner's house for a man named Peter. This is very clear that it is an example of being led by the Holy Spirit. And then number 9, the 28th time that Paul's name is mentioned is in Acts 16 and 25, where Paul and Silas were being, uh, how do they say, were being, uh, pra- uh, how do they say, singing and praising God while they was in prison. And so then an earthquake came, remember, and it shook everything and opened the doors and loosened the chains off of them. And so the prison warden was just overwhelmed, and so uh, this warden was about to kill them or kill himself, rather, because he thought that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul was led by the Spirit and remained in the prison to lead the men and his family to Christ. And so it's very, very important that we be, you know, they could just walk out and love everybody. But they were led by the Holy Spirit so that the power of God could manifest right in the face of the enemy to see that God is with them, just like God is with us. And we must be led by the Holy Spirit. And so this is very significant as it being uh, when the chains, when the doors were open, the chains was loose. And then these uh, guards, you know, there they are like, oh, my God. But we need to understand that God is, is uh, how do you say, is uh, in great expectation for us to remember that he wants to show himself strong. He wants to uh, reveal the manifestation of his power in this last day. And we need to be available. Uh, this number 28 I thought was very significant because it is uh, pronouncing the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is so needed today. Many of us get baptized. We, you know, Many of us get filled with the Holy Spirit, some with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And many of us do not have the Holy Spirit as a, a Lord, as a uh, as uh, how they say, as one that govern our lives, many of us have a carnality type of spirit, and we think that it is the Holy Spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is constantly keeping our hearts in check with the fruit of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, to keep us to walk in that type of fruit, to know that we are responsible to represent the Holy Spirit. And so then, finally, number ten, 
Uh, in Exodus 26, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2, we read that the tabernacle of Moses uh, was to have ten curtains of 28 cubits length each. Isn't that powerful? To know that the number 28 was very significant here, just in even preparing the tabernacle. And so these curtains covered the tabernacle to signify the covering of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, Do you not know that you are a temple of God? The curtains in the tabernacle represent a type of the Holy Spirit that will cover us. That means our temple. And so that means uh, the curtain is, in fact, a word type of picture analogy of the two Hebrew letters that form the number 28, which they, in Hebrew, is K-A-P-H, which means a covering. This is the Hebrew letters. And then the letters C-H-E-T, uh, which means the heart. And so the fact of the matter of this is that there were ten curtains, and these ten curtains signify the fulfillment of the law. But the Pentecost was a commemoration of the giving of the law at Sinai. And so we see here that in this message of the leading of the Holy Spirit, it shows us that the writing, uh, the Holy Spirit writes the divine law of righteousness, of holiness, of sanctification upon our hearts. And so as we hear God, as we obey God, and be led by the Holy Spirit, we are children. We are uh, our Father's children, and we need to exemplify that. And we can only do that being filled with the Holy Spirit, which means with the fruit of the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us in all things. And so that's all I have for the lesson today. I pray that that blessed you. Uh, and so now I want to shift gears about the color brown. Now, this year I plan to give uh, several different people fabric that I am anointing of the color brown. And I'm going to share with you why. I thought it was very significant when I got this fabric Um and realize what it represents. Now, again, like I said, uh, I don't do anything but go by what different anointed women and men of God. I don't like things that are very, how they say, uh, uh, I forgot what the word they use, where it looks really that you're just going by stars or people who are doing things that are not of the Holy Spirit. And so when I feel grieved when I read something or study something, I don't deliver it. I just pray about it and ask God to show me what part of that should I deliver. But as I begin to read this message in regards to um, the Holy Spirit leading uh, this uh, particular anointed woman of God, you know, I was looking for her name on here, and I don't even see it, but I wanted you to go to her website. Uh, yes, it is. Here it is. Um, yeah, that's what I want to say. The word is mystical. Uh, I don't believe in doing any mystical, any supernatural stuff. That's, I mean, any uh, star stuff like uh, reading signs and, you know, horoscopes and stuff like that. So I look for that when I'm, when I'm studying. And so how they say, you get the meat, take the bones out, and throw them away. And so that's pretty much what I did. And so her name is Carol Nimitz. And so you want to go to her site and look her up. I don't see the website. that have her name here on the study. But anyway, um, the color brown I thought was very significant as I began to go through the colors for the study that we're doing on our prayer line. And so the color brown, uh, when you look at how she said it has the mixtures of yellow and black attributes. Um, and But what stood out to me was that this color uh, stands for the humility of yielding to the carpenter of the soul. And we know who the carpenter of the soul is. It is Jesus. And so this is the color of Jesus' garment on earth, okay? And that means the fullness of the humility. And so the color of the shepherd's garment represents this color of brown, meaning the color of humility. And so the color of this uh, wood that, that our shepherd, our Lord, and our king, uh, the, this is the color of wood. Brown, if you notice, most trees have brown wood, uh, you know, and most uh, wood that is to build homes now, what have you, they're brown. And so the color of the shepherd's rod and the staff that comforts his people with his correction is brown. And then the shepherd's sling and stones 
that he allowed Goliath to kill the giants with are preferred weapons of choice for our safety or brown. And so this is the color of the good brown brown also that is ready for his seeds. And so when this 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 uh ground is ripe, how they say it or has been uh nurtured or have been uh, pruned or whatever word they use all the time when they're talking about uh, getting things ready to plant seeds. And so then the wheat is brown, if you notice that. Wheat is brown. And the bread is brown. The vine is brown. Raisins are brown. Uh, badger skins are brown. Uh, the wood inside the furniture of the temple uh, is brown. Okay? And then as the carpenter, he creates his banqueting table, his ships for casting fish, these were brown. His rod of authority that budded almond flowers and nuts, these are brown. These woods, as he got those together, this wood to fuel the fire is brown. And this is the color of brown. The wooden cross, can you believe that? The wooden cross uh, was brown. And so that our daddy God, our Jesus, the lover of our soul, was nailed to, was brown. And so with that said, um, I do plan to give a particular people uh, a brown type of piece of cloth that they can use as a prayer shawl or whatever they like. I'm just going to anoint it and pray over it that God will continue to give them greater revelation, greater uh, fruit of the Spirit, so that they will be humbled and so that they will surrender all. And that's pretty much is what I'm naming that brown cloth because it is uh, this brown color represents surrendering all. And so that's the name of that cloth that I'm going to be giving away. That's all it's going to say on there. It's going to be brown, and you can use it during your prayer time or whatever you like, but it is going to be entitled, I Surrender All, simply because this color represents yielding, represents humility, the color of brown. Well, God bless you. I pray that this teaching has helped you. And guess what? Maybe you ought to share this uh, with someone who needs to understand the significance of the leading of the Holy Spirit. And again, remember, we reserve the right to not be accused of anything that we are saying that could cause error. But we do want to say we're looking for you to share with us if there's something that you feel that is not correct or not biblically uh, right. So give me a call or email me at E-L-A-D-Like-David, Y, sons, S-O-N-S, at gmail.com to tell me where I need to be corrected or to share with me what I need to understand that may have been, you know, uh, overlooked or, or maybe not correct in this teaching. Thank you so much, and God bless you for listening.